Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So today we have a new topic, survey procedures. Survey, we have seen a uh, survey and we have heard a lot about surveys. Uh, the survey which is uh, coming just before the election, that is uh, political surveys, pre-political surveys, pre-election surveys and survey on uh, various things. So survey is nothing but a part of epidemiology or the descriptive part of epidemiology. So epidemiology we have two major varieties that is descriptive and uh, experimental or we can say observational and experimental. Observational study means uh, the investigator has no uh, special role, nothing but an observer. He just collects data and interpret the data. So survey is nothing but an observational epidemiology so let's see the definition of survey it is an investigation in which information is systematically collected but the experimental method is not used so like i said there is no experimental method is involved in survey so survey is like a common man's term uh, epidemiology is more of a kind of uh, scientific term so the types of survey we have seen this i told you there is no experimental method so it is nothing but observational part that is uh, descriptive and analytical so in descriptive we are just seeing cross-sectional longitudinal and even analytical we have cross-sectional or longitudinal so descriptive study and analytical study descriptive as the name suggests is just describe a situation like distribution of a disease we know it is uh, mentioned in, under time place and uh, distribution time place and person distribution so analytical means it tries to explain a situation by determinative power like why does the disease occur this is like where is this occurring how it is occurring how fast it is occurring and what are the age groups which is affected so here it is saying why does the disease occur so here we formulate the hypothesis in analytical we test the hypothesis and if it is based on the time period, we have basically two types that is longitudinal and cross-sectional. So longitudinal is nothing but a follow-up study. Cross-sectional is only one point of time. We'll be checking the uh, data of a population. Now let's move on to the oral health surveys. That is basic oral health surveys. These are uh, particularly uh, on the oral health matters that is defined as survey to collect the basic information about oral disease status and treatment needs that is needed for planning or monitoring oral health care programs it's nothing but uh, we do a survey to plan a program or monitor oral health care programs so these are the basic oral health surveys it has basically few objectives that is to provide a full picture of the oral health status and needs of a population and to monitor changes in the disease levels or patterns so these are the objectives of oral health surveys so pathfinder surveys are the common question uh, it's been asked so pathfinder survey is nothing but how oral health survey is conducted so it is uh, like uh, for the past uh, 25 years the practical economical survey sampling methodology uh, by considering special factors associated with oral disease which is known as pathfinder so the uh, striking feature of pathfinder survey is it uses a stratified cluster sampling technique we have seen sampling uh, designs in detail so previous videos uh, i mentioned about the sampling techniques probability and non-probability sampling so this uh, stratified cluster sampling technique are particularly used in pathfinder method so why we using stratified cluster sampling it aims to include the most important sub uh, population subgroups which are having various disease levels and uh, particular age groups also included so by this way we can uh, get a very reliable and uh, clinically relevant informations for planning a oral health program so never forget this particular sampling design stratified cluster sampling which is particularly for the pathfinder survey and pathfinder survey is for oral health surveys so we have two types of pathfinder survey that is pilot and national pathfinder so pilot surveys like any research we do pilot study before 
doing the actual study just to know the feasibility or reliability of the examiners so pilot uh, service just like a pilot seeing from a uh, very top of the uh, area so it can have a very uh, large view uh, but uh, he may need to uh, do it at a proper proper level at so that he will understand what are the limitations or roadblocks he might face in the actual study so pilot study we do on a pathfinder survey by keeping uh, one or two index ages so index ages we'll uh, see in the next slide so it is uh, like we don't take all the age groups just one or two index age groups and mostly the 12 years will be one among that and we do the pilot survey it will be a very small study why we are doing pilot study means it provides minimum amount of data uh, needed to commence planning additional data has to be collected in order to provide a baseline for the implementation and monitoring services so just to start a plan or uh, in, before planning we need to do a pilot survey by keeping one or two age groups and the age 12 should be one among that because it is a global monitoring age of dental caries and we can start the program but we need to get more data by conducting national pathfinder survey it is a very big type of service it has to include at least three age groups and uh, most importantly other uh, uh, most importantly it has to include all important subgroups here you can use only most important subgroups so you need to collect uh, people from most of the uh, cities or most of the populations or most of the group where you get the stratified sampling uh, and clusters wherever you get you need to include a national pathfinder survey the aim is to represent a very larger picture not like a pilot survey which gives a very uh, minute or very uh, fraction of the data so national pathfinder survey a minimum three age groups should be there here only one or two age groups okay so let's see what are the age groups index age groups i was talking about these are also known as world health organization index age groups or age groups or who age groups so it is uh, important that uh, when we are doing a study uh, on oral health these age groups should be included because it has relevance in our oral health the age groups are five in number that is first one was five that is for primary dentition then 12 15 35 to 44 and 65 to 74 for permanent dentition so why fifth year is important because the level of caries and primary dentition which may exhibit over a short time frame so at the age of five we have uh, our perm uh, deciduous molars uh, erupted uh, maybe for two to three years so can have a better look on the dental caries pattern and 12th year is also known as global monitoring age for caries so because it is the age when children leave primary school so therefore it is the last age at which reliable sample may be obtained through the school system because once they are out of the school it is very difficult to collect data so 12th year is very important that is why in pilot study we were including one or two index age group and one among it should be 12. so teeth have erupted except because by 12 years most of the teeth must have erupted except third molars and uh, this is known as uh, global monitoring age for caries for international comparison and monitor monitoring of disease trends so 15th year by this age permanent teeth have exposed to oral environment for three to nine years so caries experience uh, can be assessed 35 to 44 years like it is a standard monitoring group of health condition in adults so the full effect of caries periodontal disease are into action so we can easily mm, make out or do comparison of the caries and periodontal status between the people and 65 to 74 this is necessary for planning appropriate care for elderly and the overall effect of oral health care also can be assessed at this age group so the index age group or who age groups are 5 12 15 35 to 44 and 65 to 74 in pilot study out of this five two should be included and one should be 12 for a national pathfinder survey three should be included
that is total five are there so out of five there are three should be there for a national pathfinder survey okay so how we conduct a survey it is very uh, similar to our descriptive study first we need to uh, do the objectives establishing the objective then we need to design the uh, investigation sample selection conducting the examination analyzing the data drawing conclusion and publishing the result so objectives means uh, the hypothesis we discussed hypothesis null hypothesis alternate hypothesis everything we are covered in detail so we need to establish a hypothesis then we need to design how we are going to conduct the study based on the objective that is descriptive or analytical so it can be a prevalent study or it can be incident study it depends upon the um, nature of disease if it is already occur we can do a prevalent study if it is yet to occur we can do an incident study uh, so incident study um, are like uh, it is happening in the future so it might take longer duration and uh, it might cost a lot of money and administratively complicated and sometimes we need to keep control so all these are the patterns which we seen in descriptive study and analytical study so we know how to conduct a case control and cohort study we have seen in detail so i'm not going a uh, very detail about it so you can always go back and check the video where i mentioned in detail about case control cohort study in the epidemiological section and then we need to do the sample selection so selection of sample also we have covered in detail that is probability sample or non-probability sample so it depends upon always probability is uh, uh, good because it has equal chance for all participants like simple random stratified systematic and cluster so in pathfinder survey this is a combined uh, stratified and cluster was used stratified cluster sampling so non-probability convenience judgmental quota snowball so i'm not uh, going in detail because the same uh, topic we have covered so that was a sampling probability and non-probability after that uh, we need to do the examination so conducting examination uh, by approving proper uh, approval from authorities budgeting we need to schedule it and cases refill validity and reliability of data so instruments and um, examination area all these we need to plan and then we do examination on patients so we have four types of examination this is also very important for the exam types of examination so type 1 2 3 and 4 type 1 is a complete examination and type 4 is just using a tongue depressor so always keep in mind type 1 is the best and type 4 is the worst okay so keep in mind in that way so type 1 means we have all the arrangements all the uh, investigations all the equipments to understand a patient's oral health we have mouth mirror explorer illumination radiographs diagnostic methods such as pulp testing trans illumination and lab investigation we have everything uh, to understand a patient's oral health status but the type 2 is mouth mirror explorer and illumination with radiographs okay so type 2 is little bit compromised than type 1 type 3 is only mouth mirror explorer and illumination okay so type 4 is just a screening procedure we use only tongue depressor okay so type 2 is commonly we use in clinical trials when we do study uh, clinical trials we can use this type 2 with uh, mouth mirror explorer illumination and radiographs type 3 in epidemiological surveys when we go to a field we are doing study on a very large group of people so in epidemiological surveys we can use mouth mirror explorer and a torchlight for illumination type 4 is just for inspection of school children mm, in that case we can do so type 4 is screening type 3 is epidemiological survey and type 2 is clinical trials and type 1 will be a uh, most accurate and most uh, complete uh, examination so this is types of examination type 1 2 3 and 4 type 1 is a complete one and type 4 is a minimalistic one okay so after that we need to analyze the data how we analyze the data it is based on the risk estimation we know how to conduct a risk estimation relative risk odds ratio so all those uh, parameters we have seen and finally we need to reject or accept a uh, hypothesis based and we need to put the conclusion and we can publish our reports
okay so that's all about survey method survey method is nothing but epidemiology in the descriptive part we are giving in a more uh, general way epidemiology is very uh, much scientific way so we are expressing the same epidemiology uh, descriptive part or observational uh, study in a more um, common way that is survey so survey the important uh, things are the types of examination and the sampling and uh, this one the age groups okay pathfinder surveys are common questions and this index age group so pathfinder survey index age groups sampling and types of examination and surveys are very common essay been asked every uh, every say two years once in two years or every year uh, it has been asked so survey methodology and uh, the short notes are important in this chapter so i'll come up with a new session and understand thank you